Upon its initial release, My Hero Academia was referred to as a Naruto ripoff. And it's easy to see why. Both series start off relatively similarly in the very beginning. However, I think it's safe to say that by the time the third season of the anime had rolled around, My Hero Academia had proven that it was by no means a ripoff of Masashi Kishimoto's famous Naruto manga. However, even all the way into the third season, People still talk about the similarities between Sasuke Uchiha and Katsuki Bakugo. While they do share some basic similarities, overall they couldn't be more different from each other. While they do share some similarities, as in Naruto and Izuku considering Bakugo and Sasuke respectively childhood friends, and of course them being rivals to Naruto, and either two respectively. Neither of them are the nicest people in their respective groups either. But that's really where the similarities between them end. The most important thing to note is that Bakugo had a relatively normal childhood. During his childhood, he was constantly praying for his powerful quirk. His current mindset in season 3 is best displayed by a scene of him earlier on in the series as a child. Yeah, you're right. I am amazing. In fact, I bet there's no one as great as I am! Bakugo doesn't just think he's awesome. He can't comprehend the idea of the peers he thought were beneath him being on his level in power or determination. Bakugo is an angry individual that has no problem showing under people when he gets upset. He has no problem putting his anger on stage for everybody to see. Sasuke is nothing like that. When he was very young, his older brother Itachi massacred the entire Uchiha clan and used his Shinigan to make Sasuke witness the entire event. This traumatic experience turned the already inclusive Sasuke into a full-on introvert. As a genin, Sasuke rarely showed any emotion besides for arrogance and annoyance, and even then, they weren't as aggressively shown as Bakugo's anger. His annoyance would typically be shown through rude comments, referring to others as beneath him. As a genin, Sasuke didn't think he was the best, he was the best. Sakura was a joke in comparison, and Naruto, while he was improving, was still far from catching up to him. He started out the best. Bakugo, on the other hand, was not the best from the moment he entered UA High. This is why he had a mental breakdown when he realized that he isn't the best. In Bakugo's eyes, Izuku had been hiding a quirk from Bakugo for years. He felt mocked and was enraged by what Izuku had done to him. However, I feel now is a good time to talk about how they relate to the main character. Bakugo's goal. goal from day one is to become the number one hero in the world and their past all night. No matter what Izuku does, be it beating him in the combat training, or gaining better control over his quirk more quickly than Bakugo does, Bakugo never compromises this belief system. When Bakugo is kidnapped by the League of Villains and asked to join them, he declines. Despite the fact that he isn't the best in his class, and the fact that people like Toradoki and Izuku are outperforming him, Bakugo will not compromise his belief system. Bakugo will become the number one hero. Bakugo's eyes, the number one hero, is an unstoppable symbol of peace that is never defeated by anyone. A being that will never lose a battle. Bakugo is going to become number one hero the way he originally set out to do it and he's not going to compromise that belief system. Then there is Sasuke, a man that constantly compromises his own belief system in order to accomplish his goals. Unlike Bakugo, Sasuke started out being the best of the best. He was the number one in their class and the strongest getting of their age group. However, during his time on Team 7, Naruto began to grow, getting to the point where Sasuke considered him a rival and friend. It was not until the battle with Gara that this became a problem for Sasuke. However, Sasuke was far weaker than Gara, and when Sakura's life was put in danger, there was nothing he could do to protect her. The feeling Sasuke felt at the time was akin to the same feelings he felt during the Uchiha clan massacre. Sakura, his teammate and friend, was going to die, and he was still a helpless little boy that could do nothing but watch as Gara killed her. However, then Naruto showed up, saving Sakura's life and outperforming him in every way imaginable. Naruto arrived and battled Gara in one-on-one -on -one combat before summoning Gamabunta, a massive beast capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a tail beat. Later on, he would be approached by Sakura, who would thank him for saving her life from the sand monster, Gara. And Sasuke would be forced to admit to Sakura that the one that saved her was not him, but Naruto. Naruto was stronger than him and 
saved her when he could not. Sasuke didn't care that Naruto had saved Sakura. What he cared about was that Naruto had saved her while he could not. Admitting that he was unable to save her is another way of admitting that Naruto is more powerful. Then he encountered Itachi again and engaged him in combat. Itachi beat Sasuke with little to no difficulty, once again placing him under Tsukuyomi and making him relive that fateful night. When Sasuke awoke from his battle with Itachi, he engaged in combat with Naruto on the rooftop of the hospital and was forced to realize that the Rasengan may very well be more powerful than his Jidori. Sasuke was enraged upon being surpassed by Naruto and his inability to defeat Itachi. When he was approached by the Sound 4 and offered the chance to join Orochimaru and become stronger, he thought about it. Sasuke truly believed his current method of gaining strength would not work, so he decided to leave the village and join Orochimaru in order to get stronger. Unlike in the hideout raid arc, the Sasuke retrieval arc is not about rescuing a kidnapped victim. Sasuke joined Orochimaru 100% of his own free will, and it was what Sasuke wanted. On a technical level, the purpose of the Sasuke retrieval mission was to prevent Orochimaru from attaining the Shotengan, and of course, try to bring Sasuke Uchiha back to the village where they could convince him that this was the wrong decision. However, at the end of the day, Sasuke was willing to compromise his beliefs about the Leaf Village in order to obtain power. His hate for Itachi was so strong, he was willing to abandon everything he cared about. Bakugo, on the other hand, does not do this. Bakugo stands by his beliefs and is not willing to compromise them for any reason. While I can't speak for Bakugo, Sasuke continued this pattern of compromising his belief system for the rest of the series. So far, Bakugo has shown that he is unwilling to ever compromise his beliefs under any circumstances not even in the face of death. As I have explored heavily, Bakugo and Sasuke aren't very similar at all, besides for basic similarities between how they relate to their main characters. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, follow me on Twitter, which is linked in the description box down below, and subscribe for more videos like this, and have a great day.